the Community Redevelopment Agency. Today is November 19th and it's 4.33. And we will begin with comments from the public. David London. Uh, good afternoon, David London. I want to talk about uh, the area right around Sapadilla between Daytona and Avernia. I used to live across the street. And uh, when you, on the west side of Sapadilla, it's been there for a few, quite a few years. There is a bush. It totally blocks the sidewalk. Totally. It's up against a, a big concrete pole. And I went by it again today because I, I said I used to live across the street. And you, you can't, you can almost, you almost have to fall in the road. A bike can't go by there. People struggle to walk by, you gotta push the bush. It literally overlaps into the edge of the street. I mean, I don't know why no one has kind of picked it up, any of the code enforcement, the police, but kind of do a walk around, take a look at it. It is kind of a, a potentially dangerous, someone could easily fall in, you know, and um, <clears throat> related to that, um, there are a lot of empty lots there. A few years ago, I, don't, I, I came across a book where the, the author had a lot of experience around the country. He needed a minimum of three years commitment. He was willing to put in a, an urban farm, just required a three-year commitment, and uh, wrote a book about it, and uh, I don't have that, the reference in front of me, but uh, Los Angeles, in August 3rd, there was an article that inside an unsuccessful effort to turn vacant lots into urban farms through, so, through legislation in California, but they required a five-year commitment and all that. But just the principle, if you're going to have a lot of empty, empty, air, empty lots available for a long period of time and you have someone with the experience and capability, might be a lot of benefit to, to doing that. Uh, one other thing related to that area I just spoke about, mentioning I used to live right across the street in both the senior building for one year and then uh, to the building in back of it. A gentleman died. He lived 20 feet from the, 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 the building, uh, the senior building there had uh, a, a carbon, carbon monoxide renewable device that apparently was required before the building got approval. It generated an incredible amount of noise. Of course, there was also a tremendous amount of noise during construction. An elderly man who lived in the cottage, the son took care of the property in back, of, in back to the senior place, died. He died of, of cancer, prostate cancer. And it aggravated me for the period of time I lived there. His son was convinced the noise, the county of the city eventually, with my complaints, finally somehow or another shut it down or whatever, it stopped. But I believe that person died from the stress because he was there all day, most of the day. 77, I think, uh, uh, and tragic. Thank you, Mr. London. Can I ask you again what that location is, Safadilla and what? Safadilla between Daytona and Avernia on the west side. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, next is comments from the board. Um, Commissioner Lambert, any comments? No comments, thank you. Commissioner Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Just that I share it with uh, Mr. Green and that there is progress. I did see individuals out on uh, 7th and Tamron today at the, uh, I forgot the store's name, it's been so long, uh, but uh, they are making some progress, so hopefully maybe around the new year they'll be back open for that community. Thank you, that was gonna be my question also. Um, so I assume the site plan was approved, do you know, Mr. Ward? That was the last waiting document. They were, I think they were uh, waiting for a unity of title on the two properties, has that been accomplished? That's been done, yes. It's not been done. It has not been done. But we are working on it. Okay, so is Commissioner Nearing's date of the new year a possibility? Great, thank you. Commissioner James. No comments. Commissioner Show. No comments, thank you. Thank you. Okay, going on to the uh, agenda, do we have any additions, deletions, or reorganization, Mr. Ward? 
Madam President, the only addition I'd like to make to the agenda today is to announce that today is my wife's birthday and I'd like to say happy birthday to her. Wow. Happy birthday. <laughs> what doghouse are you in? None now. <laughs> Commissioner. <laughs> Okay, so we have consent agenda. Um, anybody want to make a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item number five, Mr. Ward, resolution number 1855, acknowledging City Place Retail exercise of its option to purchase the City Place property owned by the CRA. Uh, Madam President, Commissioners, um, uh, before you today is uh, Resolution uh, 1855. Um, as, you, as you know, the land under City Place is owned by this agency and has been for a number of years and, uh, and part of the arrangement in a long-term lease uh, with the organization that developed it is that at some point they would have the ability to, uh, for a minimal fee, acquire the uh, land if they made all of their payments and uh, kept the leases current and all, and all that sort of thing. So they've announced um, their desire to exercise uh, the clause, I think it's uh, section 10.1 of the master lease, to acquire the property. They'd like to move forward with it now. Uh, legal advises me that, um, that they've done everything required uh, and, uh, and uh, staff recommends that we uh, pass, um, pass the resolution. Commissioner Schoff. Thank you. I just want to confirm, Mr. Ward, this means that putting this um, into the hands of, of the City Place Group um, puts it back on the tax rolls, does it not? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Commissioner Neer. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And what do we anticipate the, the time frame on? Is it like 90 days when it's all said and done, or just a, an approximate? Well, we've got. Uh, Madam President, Commissioner, we've got uh, the attorney for uh, the purchaser uh, here. Adam Bregman, I represent the uh, developer. Um, the intended transaction would be closing in early December. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, all the paperwork's been already approved with the uh, city attorney. It's just really a matter of executing recording. Right. Yeah, Adam's been generating, and I'm, I've seen it going back and forth with Ms. Urchek, so they're ready to go. All right, thank you. I just want to... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Ward, or, or maybe Mr. Bregman, by the way, I used to practice with your dad. Okay. All these gray hairs are earned, hard earned. Uh, so tell him I said hello. Anyway, uh, can we just state for the record so it doesn't look like we're just giving this land away for $10, yes. the amounts that have been paid over time uh, so the public can get a better appreciation Gosh, uh, Commissioner, I, I wish I had the actual number with me. It, it amounts to millions, literally, of dollars, of course. I think the requirement was that they had to pay at least $20 million in lease payments and, uh, and fees over the uh, period of the lease. So it's at least the $20 million. And I, I could provide a little bit more color. I don't have the exact figure, um, but there's basically a option schedule. So it was a very large figure to acquire the property year one that slowly burned down as lease payments were made. And I think in 2015 or 16 is when it got burned down to about $10. So we've right. actually not even exercised it at that point. But we've, yeah, we've paid throughout that whole option schedule. And I think there's even points in time where portions of the property per the agreement were purchased at higher option prices. And this is just one of the, this is the balance option transaction to acquire the other pieces. Yeah. I think they initially indicated a desire to move forward with it and informed us in 2015. but. Uh, for whatever reason, they waited until this period to go ahead and close it. So we're ready to move forward. I just wanted to also share some information that the they have agreed to be part of the Downtown Development Authority. So now they will be um, participating in that 1% ad valorem that goes to the DDA that helps put money back in for the businesses downtown. So it's I mean, it's a great thing that it's back on the tax rolls, but even more for them as well. Do you have a motion? I move to approve resolution number 18-55. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Okay, number six, resolution number 1857, authorizing an interlocal agreement with the City of West Palm Beach for funding a portion of the upgrades to the waterfront electrical system in an amount not to exceed $69,832. Mr. Uh, Kelly. Scott Kelly. Yeah, this is uh, funding to pay to, uh, to beef up the electrical system on the waterfront. Um, this would be funding that would go to Florida Power and Light to upgrade all the electrical gear. Uh, this is a partnership uh, with Boat Show. Um, Boat Show is the largest user of elect electrical electricity along the waterfront. Um, they've agreed uh, to partner to the tune of $150 million, I mean $150,000, excuse me, um, with, um, with us kicking in um, 70,000. What this also does is it enables us to configure this in such a manner that if uh, there's been um, talk in regard to um, s establishing a playground area down on the waterfront, and then this would make this that possible to be able to put a playground um, by making sure all the, the gear is configured in such a manner that, um, that it, <clears throat> it would allow that use. Uh, one of the things that I think um, people don't really realize is that um, Boat Show's contractor has actually been maintaining a lot of this gear, but it's really the city of West Palm Beach owns all the gear down there with the exception of what West, uh, Florida Power and Light owns. So essentially, you know, we own it. Um, they utilize, um, uh, you know, utilize a, a good portion of it, but then it's also utilized by all the other events and all the other entities that are down on, down on the waterfront. So we felt this was a share, uh, a good sh a way of sharing the cost and it was a fair way of, of dividing the cost up among the parties since we're the owners. Um, even though we won't be paying the lion's share of it, that we would have, um, we would pay a portion of that cost. So, with Florida Power and Light. So. <clears throat> Any questions? I have one. Um, how much of the underground is going to be in, uh, impacted in terms of putting this in? Well, they're going to directionally drill everything, so you're not going to see much on the surface. But there will be. Um, pits that will have to be opened up in order to be able to, to drill the conduit. Um, and um, it's going to be a number of those pits, but we've already told them that they can't start on this till after the first of the year, obviously, because there's activities going on. And then it'll have to be completed before boat show. So it's a, it's a narrow window for this. So that's why we're trying to get, get all this lined up and ready to go. And there'll be a companion piece of legislation with the city because what we'll do is we will end up having an agreement with Florida Power and Light to actually accomplish the work, but that's an agreement with the city. This simply appropriates the funding so that um, you know we can enter that agreement with Florida Power and Light. So you'll see that the next commission meeting, but we wanted to make sure um, that we ended up having the commitment for the funding, uh, which is $70,000. So. Commissioner Lambert. Thank you. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit more about the park near the playground that you're talking about? Yeah, there's a playground um, near um, the end of, um, it's between, uh, if you go on the waterfront, it's between North Clematis and South Clematis. It's in, it's there on the waterfront. And Juanas has offered to pay um, for establishing a, a it's, a, it's really a playground for, for children. We don't know exactly how that would be configured, but um, for $5,000, we can make sure that the property is cleared of all impediments uh, in regards to the electric gear. There's considerable electric gear down there, so we can clear all that out, uh, clean that all up, and so we'll have a blank canvas to be able to do that. If we wait, um, you know, it'll cost considerably more. While Florida Power and Light's down there working, you know, we would do this now um, and make that available, that space available uh, for um, hopefully f that Qantas will still, you know, want to fund um, some sort of playground and what exact configuration they're talking about this. There'll be a lot of outreach and a lot of planning and stuff. This is just 
really at this point was just an offer from Kiwanis to either do something in Jose Marti Park, but they got excited about the possibility of doing it closer down on the waterfront. They, they really liked that idea, so. Great, thank you. Commissioner James. Thank you, Scott. While we have the ground open, is it possible to lay in conduits that we can later install, maybe fiber optic cable, and uh, since it's gonna be open, it, it, can we have that opportunity this go round? Not really on this because there's really nothing down there that would require the fiber optic. And this is really a, this is a Florida Power and Light uh, right. laying all the conduit. So, no, I, I think um, as we do other things down there, though, one of the commitments we've made is anywhere where we think that we'll need fiber optics, we're putting fiber optics in. Let me okay. give you an example. Clematis, okay? We put the conduit in for fiber optics on Clematis. Any of the roads downtown... Anywhere where we think we'd need fiber optics in the future because there could be a building or something that would, that would necessitate fiber optics, we're, we're doing it. It doesn't cost a lot to put the conduit in that you can pull it in later. So Okay. But Thank you. Just to pick up on that point, which is going to be my question, I know that the first responders have talked about having that conduit for the, their ability to monitor things at an off-site location. So while the boat show's going on or Sunfest is going on, our first responders are right there um, in terms of being able to respond to something. And they have discussed how important it is if there was that conduit that would allow communications to flow at a greater distance and not put everybody sort of right there on the front line. So I don't know whether you've had those conversations no, with I them. But I'll, I'll be glad to check with them. Yeah. But um, you know, this is really oriented north-south. Excuse me. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, this is oriented. Um, this conduit's north-south. Uh, one thing I failed to mention is it's also going to provide a loop for redundancy down there because right now you got single point failure on that waterfront. So if you have a, if you have a conduit right now, if you have a cable which is actually direct buried, it's not even a conduit. If it got severed for whatever reason the whole waterfronts without power and it c takes a considerable amount of time so the benefit here is going to be a loop so that every everything down there would be fed from two directions so in case you know anything got severed you could feed it from the other direction just switching so go ahead i just wanted to mention we have had some meetings internally with the police department and the it department um, as Scott mentioned, any road projects we're looking to put fiber in. We are in the process of evaluating. You, you saw the real-time crime system go online. Um, as part of the next phase of that, we've um, asked the police department to identify additional spots where they would like cameras put in. Some of those are on the waterfront, the Great Lawn. We are looking at that, um, and that will be coming back to you shortly. So we hope to, in effect, if we can get the funding for it, double the amount of cameras that we have, and that'll be the next phase of, of that, and it'll all be tied in. So I'm very excited about that. But I'll be, I mean, good point. I, I'll, I don't know if at this late date we can do anything with Florida Power and Light, but I'm glad that you all brought that up because I'll be glad to check and see if there's any opportunities there. So, because while we're, while they're drilling conduit, you know, so. Great, thank you. Any questions? Okay, could I have a motion for resolution 18-57? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, I think we're adjourned. It's uh, nine minutes to five, and we'll be back for the five o'clock city commission meeting. Thank you.